Well, good afternoon and uh, welcome to the last talk. Uh, thank you for still being here, for staying uh, to the end of this conference. Um, we appreciate this very much. I am Tatiana Walter and this is Martin Barber. We are from the German National Library uh, of Science and Technology, uh, TIB. And the topic we are going to address today is the integrating data from distributed sources via lookup services. And um, well, it's very similar to the previous uh, topic, but our work focuses on Vivo and lookup services in Vivo. So let's take a short look at the agenda of this talk. Um, I begin with uh, some key aspects regarding the topic, uh, and then as, it, as our work concerns lookup services in Vivo, I give you uh, a cu the current state um, of the lookup services, mm -hmm. and um, I, I'm going to introduce you uh, our work with its uh, motivation, goal, and uh, approaches we have applied to implement some additional sources in vivo. And Martin uh, is going to continue with uh, describing Cosmos, um, our technical implementations, and this will be followed by uh, some demos of the particular uh, implemented sources. And with uh, challenges and future plans, uh, we are going to conclude our, our presentation. Well, while uh, conceptualizing um, integrating data from distributed services, um, some key aspects should be taken into account. Uh, for example, purposes or types of data or formats in which uh, the data is available on the web, and um, also the feasible ways of data integration. Well, for what purposes do we need um, data from the external sources? Um, we reuse this data for subject cataloging, for annotating our data, for enriching our data with further information uh, through linking to referred objects in uh, external authorities. Uh, when we are speaking about the data, we can distinguish between uh, subjects on the one hand, the subjects from thesaurus and controlled, uh, controlled vocabularies, and things speaking in terms of semantic web, um, like persons, organizations, events, places, and so on. And uh, this data can be available in non-machine readable form, like in um, PDF or Excel or TXT, or in uh, machine-readable form like RDF, SCOS, XML, and so on. And um, we can integrate this data by, for example, importing the whole data dump into our system and using it, or we can uh, provide a direct access to external sources via lookup services. So, um, you have heard a lot about lookup services in the previous talk. Thank you, Huda and Lynette, for your uh, inspiring talk. And um, we, uh, our work concerns lookup services in Vivo, as, of, as, as I have already mentioned. Um, um, I assume that a lot of you in this audience might be familiar with Vivo already because it has been uh, the recurring topic uh, at the SWIP for last years. But for those who, uh, da who, don't, who doesn't know Vivo, just a brief description. It, it is a community-supported open source software for representing scholarly activities. It is based on linked data technologies and it provides uh, a number of, several, uh, of external vocabulary sources. So this um, currently more or less available uh, External vocabulary services um, in vivo are agric the agricultural vocabulary, um, the general multilingual environmental thesaurus, the library of Congress subject headings, and uh, the unified medical language system. All of these vocabulary services uh, use in the background different APIs. Uh, for example, AgroVoc is um, located um, on a Cosmos server and Vivo communicates with uh, this Cosmos server via the REST API. Um, I will show, in the course of this presentation, I will show you how uh, the lookup services in Vivo work. 
Now to our motivation, um, there is a number of projects where we have detected um, a strong need for more external sources in vivo. The one of this project I would like to mention is the uh, use of the research core data set in vivo. Um, this data set is a German national standard. It is aimed to harmonize, to standardize uh, reporting in uh, German academic uh, and research institutions. And this standard uh, determines a set of core elements um, for data assignment and it recommends uh, the subject classifications of the German Federal Office of Statistics for uh, subject-specific data assignment. This classification um, is, so to say, a special file, which, uh, a special case, which I'm going to, um, um, well, to, um, to show you later. And apart from the research core data set, um, it is an increasing uh, need for wider range of concepts um, in vivo for precise um, data annotating. One more uh, strong motivation is to integrate the non-SCOS data items, like, like I have already mentioned, like uh, organizations, uh, events, places, languages, and so on, on demand, so via lookup services. Uh, therefore, the, the, the goal of our work is to extend the scope of the external vocabularies and sources in vivo. And uh, these services are intended to be used by the TIB staff, by the German users of um, the research core data set in vivo, and also other interested parties. Um, so now to the approaches we have applied. Um, um, According to the different types and formats of data, to the different types of the access to the data, we can basically distinguish between uh, two approaches. Um, the first one concerns the scores based vocabularies, and the second one, other data in RDF, which is which um, data items which are not scores concepts. And uh, the first approach can be in turn divided into vocabularies like the subject classification of the German Federal Office of Statistics, which is initially, which was initially available in a non-machine readable form. form. And uh, for this case, we have chosen Scosmos because we can uh, publish it on, or locate it on Scosmos server and make it available for uh, normal users for the non-developers and um, domain experts to browse. And on the other hand, we can uh, provide a connection between Vivo and Cosmos server. Um, for that purpose, we, must, uh, we had to transform um, this classification into a Cosmos concept scheme by means of Scosify. Thank you. Osma and your team for this uh, great tool. It has uh, worked immediately and very smooth. Um, and the second uh, case regards the subject authorities which are already available in SCOS format on the web and provide their own public API which we can uh, use for the lookups in vivo. And uh, in this case we have um, um, implemented the lookup service for the standard Tesaurus for economics, hosted uh, or provided by our host, the ZBW. Um, well, and now um, I hand it over to Martin, who is going to uh, tell about Cosmos and um, show you our technical implementations. Yeah. Uh, first, a uh, few words why we are using Scosmos. Uh, Scosmos is a web publishing tool for vocabularies in the Scos format, and it is, has been developed by the National Library of Finland. Um, 
Another reason why we decided to use Cosmos is that it is an open source, uh, uh, it is open source and it has a GitHub community where we are able to report bugs or requests. And uh, as already heard in the presentation before, Cosmos provides an REST API. Other uh, usual, usable uh, features from Scosmos is, as Tatiana already said, the user is able to browse an interface, use different ordering systems like an alphabetical index, so on. And um, yeah, it's quite easy to implement uh, the Scosmos server using different languages. Um, in the next slides, I will show you as well a small demo of our Cosmos installation. Yeah, but that's later. So the technical implementation of Cosmos is mainly done in PHP and JavaScript. It also uses other open source libraries. And some, uh, for example, some plugins, uh, jQuery or Bootstrap and Composer. The requirements to run such a Cosmos server is a PHP-capable web server, and it makes sense to have at least one vocabulary in SCOS, and you need at least one triple store. In our case, we use for the triple store the Apache Jena Fuziki server, and uh, what is important is that the Cosmos uh, server and the Apache Jena Fuziki server are matching both the same Jena uh, models. And as mentioned before, there's a REST a API where you can uh, get data from this Cosmos server, and the data is linked data accessible. Here you can see our uh, technical implementation of our Vivo installation and then our Cosmos. And uh, the vocabulary, uh, Tatjana already mentioned, Fächer systematic. Um, we started to uh, include a lookup service in Vivo to the Fuziki server, and uh, this uh, lookup service is using the Sparkle endpoint of the Fuziki server. <coughs> after a bit of uh, after yeah a bit of trouble having with this Cosmos server, and when this Cosmos server was running, then we uh, implemented a lookup service using the REST API of this Cosmos server. And then if you're requesting some information, this Cosmos server answers with the JSON response. The symbol on the right-hand side stands for the normal user uh, interacting with our Cosmos server using a browser. Yes, uh, as you can see here, and also shown on other, or in the presentation before, you can see here we've got our query URL, our search term bioinformatic, and um, our vocabulary fe uh, fächer systematic. And yeah, under that you can see the JSON response. Um, yes, in the next slide, it's a moving image or yeah, it's a GIF. Uh, you will see our Cosmos installation and I will uh, say something about the feature, features Cosmos uh, is including already. On the left hand side, you can see the alphabetical and uh, the alphabetical index and the hierarchy. Right now, we are looking for bioinformatic, which yeah is shown there. We also are able to see which are the broader concepts and narrow concepts of informatics. Yeah, and here you can see the general information about our vocabulary data set, where it comes from, so on. So, yeah, Tatiana will show you now how this lookup service is included in our Vivo uh, installation. Thank you. Um, right now, you can see um, a screenshot of my test profile in a test Vivo. And um, if I, for example, if I, if I would like to add uh, one more research area, I'll, I go to this icon um, and click at it. And then I am in the Manage Concepts menu where I can uh, add one more concept. And here you can see, uh, in comparison to the one of the first screenshots where I have uh, showed, shown you some uh, 
currently available uh, lookup services in Vivo, you can see that there are much more. And um, I select here the um, subject classification, which I have already uh, mentioned. And um, I type the search term bioinformatic and send the request. So here we can see uh, the response, which we get. Um, it appears to be uh, the best match because I think uh, there is only one uh, concept for bioinformatic in this classification. <laughs> um, and then the concept is added to the list. It uh, gets its own uh, profile page and we can see that it has preserved the URI from the source. Normally, um, also broader and narrow concepts can be showed up, but it uh, this was not included in the query. Um, so, that's it. <laughs> so, yes, here you can see the technical implementation of our Vivo installation using an external source. And uh, here you can see how the Vivo installation is using the Tesaros for Economics from the Leibniz Institute for Economics. So he was sending the Sparkle request to the Fuziki server and then the JSON response comes back. Yeah, um, here are some of the Java classes uh, which were already implemented in, in, in Vivo and what we have done, we refactored them a bit and changed, of course, the targeted URL. Yes, um, as Tatiana showed before, you will see uh, an animation where this time you are uh, using a different lookup service, a different search term, and uh, the new concept is added to, the, uh, to Vivo. So challenges we are facing right now. Uh, there, there was, there were, there was something said about that as well in the presentation before, and that one of the challenges is to keep our data and our Vivo installation up to date. There are two different ideas we are uh, looking forward to in, uh, to implement. One of the ideas is to have a cron job, which is executed nightly, weekly, or monthly. The problem with such a uh, uh, cron job is that the external sources could be stressed quite often and uh, for, uh, they also could, could go offline because of too much stressing. The preferred uh, idea I'm looking forward to implement is to include an update function which is executed if in a specific web page of Vivo is uh, loaded. And uh, so when somebody's interacting with an interface of Vivo, our data from the external lookup services are always, or the data from the external lookup services are always up to date and we have an up-to-date Vivo model, yeah. Future plans we are planning to integrate is the integration of data in RDF from external authorities. So data, um, entities like organization, events, places, and languages, uh, as uh, how Tatiana mentioned already, and possible sources are Wikidata, GND, or Open Persistent Institutional Identifier for Registry. We also heard in the presentation about that, um, yeah. One important, another future plan is to implement a standardized dynamic integration of external sources in Vivo uh, via admin side. Um, at the moment, the already existing classes which are implemented in Vivo were added over time from different committers and they work um, similar but differently. So the plan is to include an uh, dynamic integration of an external source. So uh, the plan is that the user 
uh, the administrator is able to add a new lookup service into the Vivo installation without restarting, rebuilding the uh, Vivo uh, uh, installation, Vivo software. So here we can see such an um, interface. The user is logged in as an administrator. He's able to see in the table down here which uh, lookup service are already included and uh, how the status of such an um, lookup service is. He's also able to add a new source and when he's adding a new source, he has to give some basic information such as the targeted uh, URL to the REST API or the Sparkle endpoint and other links like general information that the user is able to inform itself when he's using such a lookup service. Yes, now we are on the uh, user side of Vivo. As you can see, uh, if I'm, I'm as an administrator added a new lookup service to the Vivo installation, it should show up here. I'm able to select different kinds of format, uh, formats if the REST API or the Sparkle endpoints offer them. Um, yes, one of the uh, things which are, uh, should be discussed is that if the user should be able to describe its own query because if he uh, yeah, wants to be mean, he's able to uh, describe or write down queries which are going to stress the external lookup service quite evil. Another thing we are looking forward to integrate is this run query button um, to execute the query, but also that the user is able to see where the query is going to. Um, you, I will see it down here. The, the idea behind that is that the user should be able to figure out if he has an uh, error in the query or if there's an error in general with the lookup service or the URL the lookup service is targeting. Yes, thank you very much. If you have any questions or ideas, you're welcome. Yeah. All right, thank you for that great presentation. Um, we are two minutes over, but that's okay. Does anyone have a pressing question for these folks? Any questions, comments, or feedback? Other than it was fantastic? All right. Just a quick comment. I just want to say that's really good work, and um, I want to see the mock-up somewhere soon. <laughs> that I can see them, and that also uh, contributing back to the main Vivo code on this would, I, would benefit everyone because the issues you've discussed about, especially the dynamic integration part, everybody wants a piece of that, so thank you. Thank you, Huda. <laughs> I, I hope we uh, keep in touch um, also because of the uh, integration uh, of the uh, data items, not non-scost data. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you again.